Come on, you're doing Okay, so in the last time, we were discussing about uh, design, creating a deal at the table. We're at the table with the other person and we're trying to create a deal together. Okay? So we talked about dovetailing differences and maximizing the fight. So let's talk about today in more detail. Start talking about dovetailing differences, fitting the differences. Okay? So where does that fit in on creating value? So we talked about setting up. We probe the person's bargaining positions to understand their full set of interests. So first we try to understand by interest, by probing. Okay? Especially in mediation, we, dis we discussed about that, right? That is, if we just had the win-win negotiation, they would just focus on number one and number three what you are doing in the mediation, right? Probing questions to find the interests of the two parties and coming up with a creative solution using your imagination, okay? But here we have, in this case of the book we're using, is 3D negotiation. Key difference is focusing on the differences, okay? So today we're going to talk about differences. So, the first question is, what is the key category of difference? What do we feel difference about? Then how can we change the design to take advantage of the difference? What does it mean to take advantage of? Use. Use, right? And what's the principle that we can get from here? So first is the categories. So the simplest category is the trade. If you remember in the last class we talked about the radio station needs some and new engineering equipment. Okay? The engineering company needs advertising time. So they just trade. Okay? They have different things, they just trade that. Second one is unbundling, high benefit, low cost. We also already talked about this. We talked about Israel and Egypt. Okay? Unbundling means looking at uh, your differences and seeing which one has a low cost for you but a high benefit for me. This one has a high benefit for me and a low cost for you. So we said with Egypt, the highest benefit was getting their flag on the land, sovereignty. Okay? And low cost was making the secure area, DMZ. For Israel, high benefit was getting the DMZ. But low cost was giving the flag. They don't care about who owns the land. Okay? Do you care if it's a DMZ, who owns the land? Who owns the land in the DMZ? Korea or North Korea? North Korea, half and half. Okay. So they could have done that, half and half. But Israel was more concerned about security, so they want to control all of the DMZ, make sure all it's because <coughs> Egypt could decide to build on the other half. Okay? Egypt wants to fly their flag. So high benefit, low cost. That's the second type of difference. So we're not going to talk about these two differences today. They're the simpler type of differences that we already studied the last time. Okay? So what we're going to look at is these ones: forecasts, risk. Time, tax, liquidity, relationships, precedence. There are different differences. So let's start with forecasts. What will the weather be like tomorrow? Rainy. What do you think? What will the weather be like tomorrow? Sunny. So your forecast is different. You think it will be rainy, you think it will be sunny. Okay, people have different ideas about the future. Does everybody usually have the same idea or different idea? Different idea. About what's going to happen in the future. So people have different beliefs about how future events will unfold. Do you understand unfold? Like the flower which unfolds. Okay, so we can make a contingent agreement. Do you understand contingency? Contingency means if. If this happens, we'll do this. So something is contingent on something else, it's a little bit like conditional. Do you understand conditional tense in English? If you do this, I will do this. Okay? If it's rainy tomorrow, 
I will give you some money. If it's sunny tomorrow, I'll give you some money. So that's a contingent plan. Okay? So if one thing happens, only if another thing has happened first. So if it's rainy, I give you money. Okay? So this is a kind of contingency agreement. Is there anybody who makes a bet on the rainy weather? They make a bet like this. If it's rainy, you have to pay me money. <laughs> or if it's sunny, you have to pay me money. Who would want to make that kind of agreement? Just for the weather. Who is affected by the weather? Whose business is affected by the weather? Mm, maybe, but I already made my booking one month ago. So if the weather changes, I still have to keep my booking. Right? Who? Farmers, right? If we have no rain, last summer in Korea we had very little rain. So the farmers could have lost money. Was your grandfather happy? No. Oh, so what your grandfather can do is he can go and make a bet, an agreement. If, it's, if there is below this amount of rainfall in Korea, I get paid money. Okay? If there's more, then I have to pay money. But anyway, I get my crop. So I'm going to be making more secure. So this is contingency agreement. So let's have a look at, today we're going to have a look at some examples and you have to come up with the solution. Okay, do you understand solution? Yes. Discuss with your partner and come up with the solution. So you have to look at the negotiation and maybe it took these people some days or weeks to think of a good solution, but you have to do that in two minutes discussing with your partner. Okay? Can you do that? Yes, let's try and see. Okay, so an entrepreneur wants to sell their company. Usually we have a problem when somebody wants to sell their company. There's a gap between the highest price the buyer will pay and the lowest price the seller will accept. Do we have a Zofa no. in this case? Seller will accept one million. Right? Buyer will pay five hundred thousand. Okay? Is there this is the reservation price of the buyer? This is the reservation price of the seller. So this is uh, so yes, buyer seller, right? So the seller wants one million, but the buyer is only willing to pay half a million. Is there a Zopa? No. No Zopa, right? So can they make a deal? No. Well, if we understand the reasons we can help them to make a deal, right? The entrepreneur, often the case, sees much brighter prospects. Brighter means better prospect, better future. Their forecast for the future is bright, sunny, okay? Thinking that the reason they're not bigger is because they don't have enough money and they're not big enough. If they had more money and they were bigger, then of course they would be really successful. That's what the entrepreneur thinks. Okay? But the buyer, they're interested in the company, but they are more skeptical. Do you understand skeptical? They think, mm, even if you have more money and bigger, maybe you can't be successful. So they have a different of opinion. So discuss with your partner. Let's make it a bit closer, just a bit easier. Right? 800. How do you think we can make an agreement? What's the solution? They have a different idea about the future of the company. Entrepreneur thinks the company will be very successful once it gets bigger. The buyer is not so sure. They're skeptical. Okay? They can't agree on the price. So what kind of agreement can you make? <coughs> Do you understand the situation? You understand the entrepreneur? Entrepreneur selling their company to the buyer. Can't agree on the price. Entrepreneur thinks it's going to be really successful. Buyer thinks maybe not. How can we make an agreement? Thank you. 
기업 가지고 있던 사람이 경영을 왜 잠깐 해주는 조건으로 해서 포트폴리오가 괜찮으면 하이 프라이스 하이스 프라이스에다가 팔기 네, 엔터프레너가 네, 네, 그렇죠. 얘가 경영을 하는 것 중에 그 성과를 보고 그 최종적으로 <웃음> 추가금을 낼 건지에 대해서 보죠. 월급을 주고. 엔터프레너. <웃음> 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 As a CEO, So this is a contingent agreement, okay? The seller pays a fixed amount today, so it's going to be a lower maybe fixed amount today, this price, okay? The 800,000, but they agree to pay additional money, okay? Subsequently means afterwards, based on the performance of the firm, okay? So if the firm does well in the future, then I will pay you more money. It's like a soccer player, okay? I'll pay you this much for the soccer player now. If the soccer player plays well, scores a lot of goals, I'll pay you more. It's very common. If the soccer player doesn't play well, I don't pay you any more money. Does that sound fair? Yes? So the, why does the seller sign up? Because he, she knows the company will perform, right? In her mind, this is the best company in the world. She started the company. So she thinks, yes, my company is going to be great. So I can sell it. It will be great and I'll get the money anyway. Okay? No problem. Okay? The buyer gets a good deal because they only pay more if their company meets its goal. Okay? So this is dovetailing their worldviews. Okay? They have different forecasts about the future and we're fitting them together to make a deal. Okay? So we got the first solution. So let's look at the second one. So a city needs new power sources, but only at an affordable price. Affordable means cheap. Okay. Meanwhile, a steam power company was prepared to sell steam power to the city at a high price. Do you understand steam power? Steam power. They use the recycled material and make it steam. Burn it and make steam. And then use the steam to make power. Steam engine was one of the world's best inventions ever. In the middle of the 19th century, 
in the UK they discovered the steam engine, they made the industrial revolution and trains and cars and all those things from the steam engine. Do you understand steam engine? Yes. Okay. So we have also steam power. So the two parties tried to, again they had the problem, the same problem, okay? The city is, wants to buy the power for a very low, low price. The power company wants to sell at a high price. Looks like we can't make a deal. So what they discovered is they didn't have any problem with interests, but they had a problem with forecasts. The city planning department expected an oil glut, so they said the oil price would go down. So they think the oil price is going to go down, then they can buy their energy from oil, not from steam. Okay? Uh, so they think it should be a lower price, because they think next year oil price will go down. Okay? Uh, the steam power said, no, the oil price is going to go up next year, so we want to charge a high price. Okay? We think the oil price will go up and you need to pay us a high price anyway. So, what is the solution here? So you can think about this one uh, at home. Okay? How we can make a solution to this problem. Then we'll discuss in the next class. Okay? Also, I'll try to remember the page for your negotiation. and Otherwise, I'll bring some, I'll photocopy some, just in case, extra one.